for a 501c3. Yeah. Oh, welcome. I'm a. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna skip all this stuff. I think you are. Okay. Was it in the recap? Uh, yeah, I didn't really really talk. We learned how to subquant in any phase, describe numbers using colors, place shapes. Um, so now we are going to talk about the relationship between subquant and quantity. So we're headed right into that. Okay. Well, thank you guys for coming. Um, I see some new faces out there. So I'm going to give a, a brief recap uh, of the critical piece that we got to. Uh, please don't push this device while I'm, I'm working on it. I will uh, give you one if you hadn't had one, if you didn't get one from the first session. I will give you one. Let me move it down here so that we can see it and get it out of the clouds. Okay, this is called the, the hands. The, there's a right hand, the little bitty one up there in the right, and the left hand. And the key part that we need to understand is is that we can see numbers, very large numbers. Now, this happens to be a binary machine. I'm going to load it all up. And I'm going to turn on the chat so you can see the size of this number and what it is. So in your chat, you're looking at 2 to the 10th minus 1. This is where the word kilo comes from. When In computers, when we talk about a kilobyte, we're not talking about 1,000. We're talking about 1,024. We're talking about 2 to the 10th. And this device is a binary device. It's, a, it's the most common small base number system that we have. And here I have it all loaded. Everything's ones. We have five ones in the left hand. We have five ones in the right hand. And had you been with us in the first session, you would have learned that place value is not very beneficial for people because it's only good for base 10. And it does not directly give you any assistance in learning algebra. What we talked about is a concept that's much more uh, universal. It's valid for all base systems, and it's called place shapes. It's not our discovery. It's just pretty simple to see, though the naming of it seems to be arcane. So we came up with names, and we're not familiar with any names. If we start with, well, I'm going to start with the smallest one here. If we start with the smallest shape here, this is the unit cube. Now, it can be a unit of anything. We could have one horse, one hand, and if we had such a thing, we could conceptualize by putting it into a glass cube just so we could then organize these shapes as we went along. The next shape was one of the most troubling ones we had uh, because it didn't really exist. So I'm going to skip it. I'm going to go over to this shape and look at it in 2D because it's a 2D shape. That's a square, and everybody recognizes a square. I hope your eyes are up here on the board. Let me see. I'll fly up where I am. I'm over here. Oh, not quite over that far. I'm right here. And um, that is if you can see where I am. Let me just touch on the mic. Okay. The next shape that we went into was the cube. And now these, as I name these names, these are going to become very, very important uh, to understanding algebra visually and quickly. So the next shape is a cube. Now, a cube is a 3D shape, so it really helps if I turn it into three dimensions. I get an angle on my board here. And there, so we're going to project this into 3D. And that's the cube that we saw. It's very like the unit cube. 
And those are the basic shapes. And the funny thing was, is when they talk about the fourth dimensional object, uh, you'll hear people talk about a tesseract. Well, a tesseract is something you can't visualize. And to tell you the truth, I don't really know where it's coming from that that's the next shape because here's the next shape that we get. And it, what's interesting is it looks a lot like this first shape, the one we didn't name. And if you were here in the first session, you learned that almost all the, the grade school and high school kids, they derived the name of this object. They started out with a cube being a three-dimensional object, a square being a two-dimensional object, when we got to a one-dimensional object, everybody said it's a line. And I said, yeah, but that's an infinite geometric object. And they go, well, it's a line segment. Yeah, but cubes one syllable, squares one syllable. And so I said, find one syllable and line segment. So anybody want to type it in that doesn't already know? What's one syllable out of line segment? that would be a good name for this, that's not used anywhere else, not confusing. And so the kids, all the fifth graders and the eighth graders and the 11th and 12th graders came up with it. It's a seg. So that's a seg. And so this first one, this this uh, first seg that, that's showing is a, is, a seg of, is a seg of the unit cube. That one's a seg of a unit cube. So this one's a seg of these cubes. And then the next one then would be a, anybody want to chat in what they think that would, description of that would be? I'll put up the other two so you can see. It's a square of cubes. And the next one is a cube made up of cubes. That's a cubic cubes. Then the next one is a seg of cube of cubes. The next one is a square of cube of cubes. And then the kid's favorite was the cubic cube of cubes. And so those are our shapes. And what you, the key thing to remember here, especially as we go into algebra, is a cube always is three. So a cubic cubic cube is three threes. A square is always two. So a square cubes is two and three, which is five. Uh, sega cubes, sega is one. Sega cubes is one and three, so that's four. And so that helps us get the powers. So automatically we now not only have the powers that we can use in algebra, but we know something about the shape of these numbers if they were in a magnitude. So if I if I now extend that out, so this is to the ninth power. So if I go to 10 to the ninth power, we now know 10 to the ninth power is a big cube. And when we take our, our national debt, a trillion, that's another big cube, a really big cube. And let's, let's continue. So that is the shapes. And they're very important to know the shapes. Now we're going to go into the, I may delete that. And um, bring out these sheets. And let's, if you, if you toss up the, the chat that's on there, the, the script, uh, Uta, let me just kind of see, because I think I'm now ready for that next piece. Okay, when we talk about numbers, let me clear this one off. When we talk about numbers, hmm, where am I? Am I too far away from this one? No. Okay, when we talk about numbers and shapes of numbers, and in the first one we learned that we can subquan. Subquan is the way to say a number in any base that you're looking at. And so 
if I subquan this, if I look up in the top left, that's a base seven sheet. I see that there are, wait, let me clear the bad example, sorry. Uh, there we go. If I talk about these, and I talk about them in the shapes that we've been talking about, you see that in the top left, I have two squares, five segs, and three ones. In base eight, I have two squares, five segs, and three ones. In base nine, I have two squares, five segs, and three ones. And in base A, I have two squares, five segs, and three ones. The subquan is two, five, three for all of these. I hope you can see that this is not the quantity. I'm going to put the quantity out there. And if you look in your chat, you should see the quantity for 253. There is the quantities for these different numbers. The chat automatically gives you the first nine bases, 2 through 10. And so you can see that the quantity is not the same as the subquant. And the quantity doesn't help you. If we look at, let's look at the information. Let's look at seven. The quantity is 136. Um, that doesn't look like 136 in base seven, does it? And in base eight, that's 171. Uh, the number that we're looking at doesn't look like 171. And in base nine, that's 210. And again, that doesn't look like 210. However, the quantity in base A and base 10 is 253, and boy, that does look like 253, doesn't it? So there's some information, there's an incredible amount of information that we lose that is fundamental, fundamental to algebra, but we lose it when we talk quantities. This information is completely gone. The 253-ness of these quantities when represented in their base pairs is completely lost. So let's work on how does this work? How does this evolve? Let's start out with some simple algebra. So I'm going to go all the way back to the very simple algebra and we're just going to look at this. It's going to, I'm going to keep it coming out in the chat too so at least you know what number that you can refer back to it. If you look at the pattern in these base sheets, it's all the same. It's a one. Does anybody care to venture what the algebraic equation expresses y equals x, or in this case, quantity equals some representation of the base? Can somebody type in the equation? So for base seven, it's, or for seven, y equals one. For 8, y equals 1. For 9, y equals 1. For 10, y equals 1. There, it's a good guess, but there's no x. There you go, Alexis. y equals, well, x to the 0, but I would have just said y equals 1. The general equation, if I want to tell you what y would be for the base sheet 27, base sheet 2,358, if this pattern continued, which your eye can see. In fact, well, maybe I ought to check. Does everybody's eye see that there's only one cube in each sheet? Just type a Y in, please. It just lets me know that we're all here. So please type in a Y if you can see that there's only one little green cube in each sheet. It lets me know if it's resin. It lets me know if we have second life problems. It lets me know if you can hear me. It lets me know if you're responsive. And I see that five people are responsive, and I see more than five people in the audience. There come some of the other ones. Even the post is, is responding. Thank you so much. Everybody should be responding. Because this algebra, when I'm done, you will see some algebraic equations, which won't show all of them, but it lays a foundation.